Okay, welcome back. This is part three of an end-to-end -end modeling and path setup where we are making this uh, acrylic, uh, I call it an Altoid rack uh, for holding these tins for uh, part sorting and so forth in the shop. Uh, in the previous two videos, we modeled up the parts and then did a rough assembly of them to check for fit. And in this one, we're going to set up the path job and actually cut the parts out on the laser cutter. So let's jump in and do that. We're going to switch to the path workbench and uh, I should point out right now that I'm running a version, a pre-release version of 0 0.18 and 0 0.18 added uh, a new feature called multi-base jobs uh, which is very handy for this sort of thing where we want to cut multiple parts at one time. If you're running 0 0.17 or God forbid something earlier than that, uh, you're going to have a lot more difficulty cutting multiple parts in one job. Um, in 0 0.18 it's relatively easy. In 17, the easiest way to do this would be to manually change your placement of each of these objects and get them laid out the way that you'd want to cut them. Then select all of them and create a compound in the part workbench and then that compound could be your base object for the job. But in uh, 0 0.18 with multi-base jobs all we have to do is select all of them in the tree and create our job and you'll see that the selection came over here. I could modify that selection if I'd only done one. And then pick your template if you're using one. I have one set up for laser cutting acrylic so I'm going to use that. And then click on OK. The, uh, it, this will open up the task panel for finishing the job. Now if we zoom in on this you're going to see the wireframe uh, of the stock object around that collection of base objects that, that I chose. And uh, obviously that's wrong because I'm going to be cutting this out of a sheet stock. So I need to reorient these parts and recalculate the stock. Now the way to do that is really easy. You just select one of the faces and that will turn on or enable all of these controls here. I can select the, one of the faces for the flat pieces, click on the Z axis and you'll see that it rotated it so that this face is now pointed up along the Z axis. And I'll do that for the other ones as well. And uh, let me zoom in so I can get to the floor. Now you'll see that the, the pieces are all oriented correctly, but they're not placed. Uh, so there's a Z equals zero button will do that. So I'm going to, again, select each of these, put it at Z zero. Okay, so now they are um, in the right plane and they're oriented correctly, but they're overlapping. So now we can just sort of rearrange them using this control here. I'm going to roll up the units to about 10 millimeters and uh, we'll start rolling them this way. Um, my uh, laser cutter, uh, the x-axis is the short axis. So what I'm going to do is rotate each of these 90 degrees this way. And, uh, um, and then I can place them stacked one over the other or not stacked but aligned that way and I'll try to keep them close together to minimize the stock usage Now one thing that is uh, um, not quite, uh, let's see if I can get that in here. Um, so then when I get them placed like this, now I can go back and hit the refresh button. And now it's recalculating my stock. But my origin position is still out where it was. So I need to move my origin because uh, I want zero, zero in my cut job to be at the corner. So I can just come down and select the uh, corner of the... Uh, stock object or I could select the corner of the part it doesn't matter and then say set origin and it'll bring it down here and I want my parts to be in just a little bit uh, from the uh, from the corner of the stock so actually choosing the corner of the stock object makes more sense 
All right, so now that looks pretty good. That's going to be laid out uh, like this in the laser cutter, x-axis running this way, y that way, and the parts one over the other. And uh, um, so I'll say OK on this. Now you'll see that my parts, my assembly jumped right back to where it was before. Uh, if you, I've already used path, this won't surprise you at all, but the first time you're in here, it's, it's kind, of, uh, kind of surprising. Path is actually creating a clone of each of the objects to serve as the uh, uh, base object. So if I open up the, the job node and look under models, you'll see that I've got these grayed out copies of my model or of my, uh, my parts here. And I can toggle the visibility with the space bar and you'll see that now these are laid out the way that, that uh, they will be for cutting. And Path is good about keeping track of visibility. So if you're not editing a job or an operation, it's going to show you your actual model view. And then if you open up the job, it's going to hide the model. I can go back over and you'll see now my model is hidden and my, my uh, base objects are shown. And if I close that task again, it puts everything back the way that it was. Um, and it, this is going to be true as well if you uh, start to edit a, an operation. So we're going to do um, a, a face profile. And as soon as I uh, select that, again, it, it shows my model the way that I want it for cutting. So I've started to create the operation. There's no base geometry in here, so I need to add... Uh, the faces that I want to cut one at a time or multiple and then in the uh, um, I, I could hit apply on this and it'll generate the uh, the outside profile and but you'll see that it's not cutting the holes uh, or the, the the back hole here and that's just a setting on the operation I want it to process holes and process circles as well so I'm going to hit apply again now I'm going to get a toolpath corresponding to uh, those holes, and that looks fairly complete. So I can say OK. Again, it, it uh, hid my uh, job base objects and showed my original model, but it's still showing me the tool back plot in the, in the correct orientation. Now the next thing that I have a problem with is that even though this is we're using a laser and the beam is very very small, uh, it's still going to be um, the the beam has some uh, some radius to it. So while it is cutting the uh, um, that profile, it's the, the corners are going to be rounded as the tool comes around. It won't be able to get all the way into the corner. Uh, so if I you know, if I open this up and and uh, look at this from the top down, let's see if you can see what I'm talking about. So zooming in on this corner, I mean the, the beam is going to come in here, but it, it's going to be a rounded shape. So this very inside corner here won't get cut, and that's a problem with something like a like a, a finger joint fit in here because I need those pieces to fit uh, flush together. So what I'm going to do is add a, a, a dog bone uh, dress up to the operation. So I'm just going to select the profile faces, go under the path menu, dress up, and dog bone dress up. And uh, you won't see anything noteworthy here unless we zoom in really tight on these corners. And... Uh, like this one here, you'll see that it is cutting outwards. And here it's cutting in. So as it comes around, as the beam comes around here, it's going to make a small movement into the corner to remove that remaining material. Now it won't move it on this outside because the beam's going to be going around the out, uh, outer side that way and it's, uh, the outside corner won't matter. Now to get our G-code output, all we need to do is post-process the job. Um, if you select the job, you have a few options here to choose uh, the post-processor you're using. I've got a smoothie board driving my laser, so I have that one selected. And I'll usually put in uh, um, the name of the file that I want to produce. And then simply select the job and hit the post-process button. 
it will suggest the file name and we'll save it out. We get a chance to uh, review our settings. My spindle is at 0 0.6, which controls the power output on the laser. And uh, my feed rate comes from my template, and uh, which are, these are settings that I've used in the past and worked pretty well. Click on OK and it writes the file out and uh, we're ready to try it out on the laser. Okay, so the parts came out really good. Uh, fit is nice and tight. It's actually a little surprising because I think my laser cutter has a, uh, I think the bed sags a little on one side. So on these bigger cuts, sometimes I, I don't get uh, a real accurate cut on the end. But pieces came out really good and uh, fit really tight. I should be able to just pop these together and uh, glue them in and it'll be set to go. Uh, it just takes a little bit of force to, to push in, which is exactly how you want it for gr gluing acrylic. Alright, there you go. I'm going to glue that up and hang it on the wall. So I'm using this uh, tap uh, acrylic cement. This is uh, a uh, free-flowing, so this stuff is has the consistency of of water and uh, a little bit difficult to apply um, and it tends to evaporate really really easily so I keep it sealed up in a bag and uh, with the lid as tight as I can get and uh, um, to try to slow down that uh, evaporation the uh, it comes with a I like a little squeeze bottle with a needle applicator and if you with a bit of practice you can kind of control the flow as you squeeze the stuff in and it'll wick into the joints uh, and and then dissolve the the acrylic uh, and you'll get really uh, a really clean bond without uh, but I've never been quite good enough to to make it work like that my bonds always end up looking a little little messy. But I'm not about to be the pretty. So this project is not terribly complicated, but my goal here was, you know, not not precision engineering. My goal was to have something that um, you know, I can I can cut another one of these anytime that I need it uh and and adjust to whatever material I have on hand and then uh, you know, I, I don't have them sitting around in a box someplace and, and, uh, uh, or, or I'm, you know, doing without this way. I just kind of keep my resource in a digital form and, and when I need one, I cut one and, and off it goes. Anyway, uh, we'll give that a try and we'll see if it, uh, does the job.